Hey everyone, and welcome to what is going to be an amazing new series of videos being uh, being done with myself, a 2K trash can, living in Archon, versus a professional player that we are, we're being joined today by Double A of Game Leap fame. And uh, you know, if you've heard his voice before, you've probably heard it on the uh, the Game Leap subscribers channels. And uh, that's because he's an absolutely fantastic player. He's a professional player, formerly being in the uh, DPC, uh, formerly of an e-boy. And uh, quite frankly, he is going to absolutely demolish me. But that is why we're here, because we're going to see the difference between a mid 2K and a mid 7K. Someone in the top 1,000 versus someone who isn't even ranked, because I'm, a, again, I'm a 2K Archon. So what's going to be interesting about this here is that Double A, you're going to give it everything you've got. But what I want you to explain first, though, is what we've done here with regards to A, the matchup, and B, what you've traditionally played in the past, because you're not a mid player, and well, neither am I. But why don't you give us an idea of why we've picked the heroes we've picked, and uh, what the game plan is here. Alrighty, so we picked two heroes that are probably very popular in the 2K, 3K bracket. It's Dragonite and Zeus. Both are very strong, but they both have two criteria that they're trying to hit. Zeus is more of a farming mid laner, so he's going to want to get as many CS out of the lane. DK, he wants to get active, he wants to get his blink, but more importantly, he has a large amount of tower threat. So hopefully, if DK can use Breathe Fire properly, and if Zeus can use his Arc Lightning and his mana properly, both can have very good lanes. Mm -hmm. Now this lane does favor Dragonite a little bit, right? Um, in in a like a very classic 1v1, DK should have more than enough regen to kind of out-sustain Zeus. So Zeus shouldn't be able... Zeus can obviously pressure him really early, but with more points in your passive, you should be fine. Okay, and I might have to prioritize more points in my passive, knowing that you have 5k on me with regards to MMR. Um, well, I should also mention that down below I'm going to be linking Double A's Twitch channel and his YouTube channel. The Twitch channel is absolutely fantastic. I watch it every time he's live. Uh, he's playing extremely high-end Dota. And uh, it's it's really a marvel to see. So I, I really suggest you guys check it out. And the YouTube channel has a lot of fun stuff, including the episode of Dota Jeopardy we had done with myself, Steve Quixotics, and Jimin's Bulge, hosted by none other than Double A. So it's it's really a lot of fun. So definitely go check out those uh, those socials. They'll be linked down below, and the Twitch in particular, if you want to watch really really good Dota. Um, you know, it's it's an amazing stream. So definitely check it out. Occasionally, very good Dota. <laughs> there's there's a lot of mediocrity in between. Well, it, it can't be any worse than my 2K, trust me. But what we're going to do is we're going to get started, okay? And uh, again, so I'm 2K. We're against a former pro, uh, 7K player. Uh, he does not traditionally play mid, uh, but we're going to see the difference. And the plan is, after we do our 1v1, we're going to go through the replay. And Double A, you're going to talk us through some of the things you were thinking and noticing that kind of makes the difference between a 2K mid and a 7K mid. Are you ready to go? Yep. All right, let's go. David versus Goliath. The under the underdog always has a bit of an advantage. Always. I'm very nervous. I'm, I'm a spirit breaker player at heart. Zeus and just mid lane. I gank this lane. I don't play here. You know the real pro, pro play would have been like, skilling heavenly jump, Let's get so I could go back and block the creep player. Don't do this, but it would be very funny. On it. All right, so we got the the bounty runes. I got a really pathetic block here. Let's go. Showing my off lane and position three, uh, position four powers here. It's why we're here. Oh, nailed it. Yeah. Forget it. I actually kind of maybe even blocked too well because I don't want to put creep aggro into my tier one. Not sure he. Face me. Oh no! It's the beginning of the end. The beginning. It's already over. It's already over, folks. Rest in peace. The first range creep is just—it's a psychological game, right? It there. is. I'm, I'm I'm a broken man now. I don't think I'm a oh no! 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 no. <laughs> this isn't happening. I like it. I'm not actually this bad. Oh we my can god! We all see where this is going. This is, this is embarrassing at this probably point. Go over here. That's a good guy. Stay alert. <laughs> Just a sh- We're under attack! <laughs> right. I really use a creep aggro well. Moving. <laughs> I completely demolished. I have one CS. I'm warmed up. I am so warmed up right now. Dude, I, I was nervous. 
Let's and go. it's showing. Oh my god, I cannot get a CS to save my life. Stay alert. So Iraq won't let me die. Good little aggro go. for it there. This has been a complete train wreck for me. I'm ready. What is you... Ooh, the stick charges. The early stick. I didn't think about it. I didn't know I didn't know what I was up against. I didn't I didn't click your inventory. That was a mistake on my part. Enough talk. It's a complete disaster right now. It's why we're here. But can I recover at 6 CS? The enemy could be anywhere. Alright, so I need to I need to get aggressive here. Pleasure. I'm up in your grill. Face me. Can't do much. Nope. Except kill me, I guess. Enough talk. Right. It could be this way. Oh, I missed another CS. Are you okay. upset about missing one CS? A little bit, yeah. Do we need backup? Oh, I messed up there. Uh, actually, I didn't. Ready for action. Mental note for something to talk about right there. On the oh move. my gosh, I messed up. We're under attack. Pressure's on. Show no fear. Let's get into some trouble. I don't back down from a fight. <clears throat> You're good, but not good enough. Oh Got to move. The thunder lends me its on it. I'll go where I'm needed. Moving. Oh. I messed up the last hit there. I like it. I should probably go over here. See your soul. I'll go where I'm needed. I don't mean, I'll take the free beat. No! Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. I uh, I stepped under the tower. That was so bad. That's like literally lack of experience. Oh my gosh, it's embarrassing. Yeah, but that, that's like a, it's it's 2K, man. I'm constantly I, spamming the alt button to check for the tower range. But that matchup, even at that point, you can tell that I'm like, you're doing pretty decently against me in lane because the regen I can't really like. In order for me to get a kill on you, I kind of have to just go full burst. I like it. Yeah. I'll win this fight. But you're out leveling me. We can all You've see got a kill on going. me. I actually hesitated to use my courier, so now I'm so playing kind of passively for a, for a level. I also forgot to make it so many minor mistakes. They're actually kind of major. Right. Takes more than that to kill an elf. Moving. On my way. I mean, I made a decision, which uh, I don't know. But it, it'll be an interesting talking point. It'll be an interesting talking point. I'll fight to the end. What did you say? So that's a six minute rune, I'm still at the bottom. Move. Make an easy trade. We're done here. Father prepared me for this battle. <laughs> Let's get into some trouble. I need help. 
can see my stack. Stay alert. Let's go. Oh, my top tower is under attack. <laughs> There's nobody in the game, but your creeps are automatically pushing at seven minutes. I'm just gonna relish that. Do we need backup? To your bottom tower. I'm ready. Which protects also requires protection. What fools are dragon knights? <laughs> You blowing up my wave like this completely negates my push. Yeah. That that is indeed the point of that. should probably go over here. I'm going to abuse the bounty runes. Let's go. It, it seems natural. If you if you got to run that far, I guess it's worth On it my for way. you. I left my horde to my own stats. The great end. I was gonna say, is this bounty rune worth it, buddy? I don't know. That's fine. Not yet. We uh, already take some losses. Sacrificing for the greater victory. Usually what we want is a head with like a CS check, but if we really want to go for towers, I think you're gonna win that aspect. <laughs> for the record, I'm at 58 CS. That's pretty good. Where are you at? I'm at 72 right now. 71. We're under attack! Even the Elkworms know I'm a killer. Moving. Ready for action. <laughs> Just running under the tower. Look, it is intimidating. Right. Stay alert. On the move. It's why we're here. Don't have enough mana for your ult. I don't know. I remember my train. Take me to the fight. Play it real close here. I've survived the catapult, so I'm not as afraid. I'm under 
Oh my god, I missed so much DS there. I relent. <laughs> this is like right down to the wire. Oh, this is the end. I feel like someone should buy uh, buy some regen here. Or get a rune, of course. <sighs> My wounds will I wish you want to love tap this tower. That's so sad. That's what I needed. I didn't want to buy regen. <laughs> I get there in one piece. Tower is, so easy. is the buyback ridiculous like or it. what? It's a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> I've trained with the best. You're going for it. Or you're just going at it. I'm going for it. I think you gotta get it too. What did you say? Yes! You <laughs> yes! <laughs> victory! <laughs> I guess it was a victory, but. I don't know if it actually counts as victory, but. Uh, I took the down the tower first. But you, you had more did. CS. You had more CS had, in 10 minutes. I also had three kills. <laughs> I also probably have Kaya either lens in 13 minutes. All right, so I fed, I fed the, uh, I fed the mid. Okay, so let's take a second here to break down the replay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the replay. Now you might notice that Double A's uh, webcam's off. It's because the only way that we could do this is if he turned off his webcam so that he could record the actual uh, source from his end. So please uh, forgive his absence. He is here, I promise. Um, I'm the ghost of Double A. Yeah, the ghost of Double A. So, anyways. <laughs> We're looking at the replay here. We're starting here at four seconds. Double A. Now, I'm going to give you the floor completely. I want you to talk about, uh, you know, what you're seeing, what you're doing, and how you're taking advantage of my mistakes to kind of really solidify this lane. And you, you might want to pull up the net worth uh, chart because I think it gets really crazy really fast. So let's take a look. You take what you like. The floor's yours. I think you actually get back into it at one point. So we're going to start from kind of pre rune. Something that's very important is obviously placing a warden. I actually, because the replay starts at a very weird time, went to go check for a ward, but there just wasn't one to find. Having a ward to spot out in particular, like the six minute rune is very important and for rotations from other lanes is really good. Specifically when you're playing a ranged hero, it is incredibly important that you have high ground vision of the enemy hero at all times. So if anything, you can cast a spell at them or you can just auto with them. But if you are playing a melee hero, it makes it a lot easier for you to pull aggro if you can just pull aggro when you see them on enemy high ground. So we're gonna start by just playing, getting the bounty rune and running to block. Now in melee versus ranged matchups, getting a really good block is incredibly crucial on someone like a Zeus. So Zeus has a very good base auto attack. It hits for 65, it might not be the like the highest attack speed, but it's considerable enough that it can zone out a DK at a low level. So at this point, I've won the block. The creeps are up on my staircase, and right now, I, I would pause right here because there are several things that are kind of strange. Now, you do the correct thing of pulling aggro, and I'm in a weird scenario in which I would also probably naturally would want to pull aggro. But because I blocked so well, me pulling aggro would drag it into my tier 1. So I end up having to tank the creep wave, and I end up being on the wrong side of it. I kind of want them to hit my range creep first, but I end up pulling toward myself incorrectly. So... In this moment, every single time I'm auto attacking, I'm trying to get as many auto attacks in as possible. And the most important thing that you can do in order to ensure that is you have to remember that melee creeps have a range, I think a, an aggro range of 400, and I think range creeps have an aggro range of 450. So the thing that you should be doing when you are doing a range versus melee matchup is standing outside of the range and just harassing as much as you can. So in this case, I'm constantly pulling creep aggro even when I am harassing, but I understand that my 65 damage is just more than this melee creep's 21. So I'm perfectly fine taking this trade. More importantly, by me harassing you off of the wave, I put you in a position in which even with breathe fire, it's going to be very difficult for you to get a range creep. So in this case, my range creep is still on my high ground. It falls low enough and you're just not there in time for to get the last hit. And this is very crucial. Here I actually made a little bit of a mistake you if made was, a mistake. I made a mistake. By made golly, a mistake. the mistakes yeah. I'm making so far. The mistake I should have made is I probably should have skilled Heavenly Jump already here. Every single time when you were playing Zeus, and just a very common trend of winning the mid lane, and something that you're seeing right here is 
it is very beneficial for you to spam in the wave. Now, I'm going to spam in the wave at very key crucial moments, like when DK go is going to push on my high ground or when I'm going to get a run to the water rune, right? At all points in the game, it's going to be very beneficial for me to have an advantage of creeps pushing toward his tier one. Not only would it be more difficult for him to man up, because instead of dealing with three melee creeps, he's dealing with six. It also just means that if the creeps push far, far enough, they're going to go under your tower and you're going to have to deal with, you know, the 90 damage tier one. And it's going to be very difficult for you to get last hits, even on a character like DK. So every single time you come up just to try to hit me, you get auto attacked by four creeps. And I can actually just return every single auto attack you do and more. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a good thing here. I'm constantly trying to pull aggro, but you're pulling aggro back and I'm getting a couple auto attacks off of it because I have my wall of creeps in front of me. This is, you know, a very standard laning, a bit of a lull. You're running at me. I'm abusing the fact that your armor isn't high enough yet. Like this lane, for now, is very Zeus favored. I, I hit slightly harder than you. You don't have the armor to just completely sustain through it. So I need to be taking advantage of every opportunity that I got. Now, an important timing is coming up here for me. Now, I intentionally, when I bought my starting items, I did not buy out. I had about 200 gold left over because I knew it would be incredibly crucial for me to get a bottle before two minutes. What you are trying to do is you're trying to get at least six or seven, the magic number is seven last hits before a minute 30, because I need to have my bottle pre two minutes. I need to have my bottle. I need to bottle twice or three times, and I then need to run to the water ring. So in this case, I'm playing a little bit more aggressively than I should. I realistically, in this situation, I should be just spamming out the creep wave. I go for a kill here. It just doesn't pan out. I run out of mana, but this is fine. And I'm going to run and get my rune. So a very standard minus that little kill attempt I, I, I went for. It was, in the end, kind of an inefficient play for me to make. In two minutes, you're like... 300 gold over me which is insane yeah i it's... mean I, I i capitalized on my moment i think this is gonna switch very soon Once i kind of get back into right it now. a little bit but like it's crazy how like listen like i'm not i'm not a new player but once you put a really high pressure situation on top of a mid I'm under tower. I'm trying to get CS. I'm coping with your harass. It was too much. Like I, I was not, I did not manage the situation properly. Right. And it goes to show you just like how hard Dota can be. And like all these little things you're doing are adding up to like me missing CS under tower and me just like being well behind you. So it's, it's incredible to watch it as a replay. Like it's almost, it's almost a cringe festival, honestly, but at the same time, it's so revealing. It's so revealing. Yeah, at this point in the lane, I've come, I'm have come. i coming to terms with the fact that it's getting very difficult for me to pressure you because you have a Bracer and you have level 2 armor. So you were just casually healing for like 12 HP regen a second. <laughs> and uh, I don't have the mana pool yet to sustain the amount of harass that I need. So somewhere around here, I think I spam out the wave. I, ho I hope I spam out the wave. I don't exactly remember, but if I was a good little Zeus... I should start, yeah. I start spamming out the wave. Do I even, do I abandon the range creep? Yeah, I even abandon the range creep. Yeah, so the play that you're trying to make on Zeus, and a lot of heroes that have the ability to just, you know, spam through small camps, is I leave the lane somewhere around 3 minutes and 45 seconds. I want to stack the small camp at 354, 355, and I want to stack and pick up my water rune. In the meantime, like you could be thinking that I lost, I lost a lot of creeps that, you know, I lost a lot of XP. I really didn't. The, the creeps were on, I mean, I shoved in the creep wave before and uh, you are now running to your rune as well. And now I have two range creeps and two melee waiting for me. So in the end, while you may be slightly ahead in XP right now, I'm going to get this wave and I'm going to be right back into it. I missed some last hits here though. That took me off guard. I did not think that would do that much damage. This is this is the point in the lane where I think I am weakest and you are strongest. And that's why you've, you've brought it back within 100. Because not only do you have more damage than me, you also have two bracers now. Just the amount of passive HP regen you have, like you can play very aggressively here. Dude, and, this uh, is wild, yeah, this is too wild. I miss up the high ground? No, I got a kill. There we go. 
<laughs> here I, I made a mistake. I should have be immediately ferrying out my items, but I was like, I was relieved, right? This is this is the part where like, okay, who, you know, MMR still works. You know, I'm so happy. I'm just sitting casually with a thousand gold, not buying a south, not buying regen, not buying anything. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm the best. I'm really feeling myself. I'm running around in circles. <laughs> you, can, you can really, you can really see the. Uh, the happiness, how elated I was, and I end up. And this is this is a very common thing, actually. In in this scenario, uh, this is actually something that pro players and like you know, very high MMR players they'll just deny themselves to the tier one because they just find it faster to for them to die and to respawn and to TP back mid with full mana and full HP. Mm -hmm. Because yes, I'm probably going to give up a little bit of gold. I'm going to give up like 200, and you're going to get some of that back. But the important thing is, is I'm going to have, I'm still going to preserve my EXP lead because you're not going to be there when I die. And what ends up happening here, realistically, because I didn't send out my courier for so long, is that this lull allows you to get a lot of last hits and a lot, you're going to pull back within EXP range and I shouldn't be allowing this to happen. I basically wasted 40 seconds. I'm sitting at 190 HP and I can't go up to lane. I'm one Q away from death. So kind of what I've been, you know, what that kill accomplished for me kind of gets deleted here and mm. um, potentially denying yourself the tower is a a play that you can make even though it may look funny it may seem funny but you have to think of it like when supports used to run uh, tier twos or deny themselves to neutrals like there's a reason why neutrals set your uh, death cool down to 26 seconds because it was just way too effective to do that so i'm claritying i didn't get the stack in time i'm a little bit sad here and uh i also didn't ship out a ward so many mistakes I'm doing my walk of shame top. Meanwhile, as you can see, I was talking about the net worth lead just evaporating. Mm -hmm. I've been idling for 30, 30 seconds. Uh, I mean, this would have been a perfect time for me just to, to run a tier, tier one. So we're back to that one, 100 net worth lead. But uh, I am ahead on XP and I have itemized against Breathe Fire. I do have raindrops. Now, I think I this know. is a very crucial part. Is this the is it DK ult? No. Well, I'm six, but I don't know if you noticed, but I actually did not take his ult at six because yeah. I actually focused on the regen so I could hurt, so I could kind of like, uh, so I could sustain the lane better because I felt like you were doing too much damage to me. And I was like, in my head, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get roasted for not taking DK ult at six. But at the same time, I'm like, I need to, I need to hold my ground. If I die again, this, this lane's done. If I feed, this lane's over. I need to be able to stand in lane, get CS, and I think the added armor and the added HP regen was going to pay dividends for me. So I said, if I delay it, but but what that, what ended up happening was I delayed it to the point I didn't get to level seven in time to to uh, to be able to use my ult with the cart. So it didn't actually work out. Like I actually had this idea of taking the uh, the additional point in regen to be able to sustain the lane, and it 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 was it was. It was a fool's quest because ultimately I did not do anything I was supposed to. Yeah. Well, if we're really talking about DK, mid DKs in certain matchups, they actually even take Dragon Tail level one because one, it does 70 damage, which is only 10 less than Breathe Fire, which you can use on a range creep. But you got to view it kind of like OD with Astral. If you are in a melee versus melee matchup, obviously Zeus is a little different. You can Dragon Tail and, you know, get a, get a deny because it stuns for 2.25 seconds at level yeah. one, which is very strong but your build the reason why i was earlier surprised by why breathe fire did so much damage is because you're not supposed to have that many points into it so i was very surprised earlier when when i dropped down to 100 hp i was like whoa that's a high level breathe fire i, I expected a point in stun which could have easily gotten me killed because even the one point of it is so strong yeah. and i kind of expected at the catapult wave at minute five which is like a, a very important timing if you want to push you had a creep wave running at me and you didn't have ult and i found out very surprising. Those are like two opportunities in which I either expected to get stunned and, you know, harassed a lot, which would have been the best case scenario, right? At the catapult wave, you have a point in your stun and you have a point in your ult. You stun me, you auto attack me two or three times. You breathe fire me if necessary, but I'm not going to be able to contest your push. And you auto attack the tower once, right? As long as the poison is ticking on it, you're doing enough damage to it. The catapult is really what's going to, to push. So in this case, you're going to do what you should have done earlier but you don't have stun and it's this very awkward scenario in which you're running at me but i just don't care and uh i just get rid of your creep wave and now yeah. it becomes a lot more awkward for you to to pressure my tier one and in the meantime i'm going to collect some bounty runes this is uh 
This is gonna be a slow little regen fest. <laughs> Don't know if it was fair, but uh, here it's all right. we are. Sorry, right. you earned it. <laughs> it's just it's just hard to watch because it's like I'm recognizing how poorly I played, and it's it's hard because like I tried. It's like I tried to overthink things a little bit, and it just was wildly bad. Like it's funny because the guide I use, which is my actual own guide that I writ I had written, has a value point in uh, Dragon Tail at four. Um, obviously, I take yeah. my alt at six. Like I literally did not follow my own damn guide because I was trying to like, okay, I'm against double A right now. He's harassing me like crazy with his Q. He's pushing the lane in. What can I do to kind of like hold this lane and just keep steady? I was trying to kind of maintain my like CS, and I completely just. I, I didn't play Dota. I played whatever. I played some single player game. It, it wasn't Dota. What I just did, right? And it's yeah. it's and it's almost embarrassing to come to that realization. It's like that's not embarrassing. Yeah, but you know what? It's like you try to get too fancy. <laughs> you do sometimes try to get too fancy, specifically in one v ones. Like I was thinking about changing my build, but I decided to leave it more standard. Obviously, I could like max out the efficiency and start stacking nulls, which would be the best thing. You would win the lane, but not win the game. Is basically how that would go yeah so it's a, it's important to make sure that your items are tailor fit to what you're trying to accomplish so hence why you see an arcane boots which is probably not the most you know efficient item in this case you can get a lot of damage to my tier one and uh i am just gonna be having a blast in the jungle <laughs> i'm just gonna be connecting the pool the two camps together i'm gonna get a pig pole I'm doing some standard mid laning. A lot of playing mid isn't about winning the lane. It's just making sure that you out you out farm. You need to have more net worth than the enemy plus two, and you have to realize that net worth. And while you may be putting a large amount of damage into my tier one, which I am concerned about, I am winning by about you know 800. Or I can't do the math. 700. Yeah. Net worth. So the main thing is. Like, in my in my head, the thought process that I have is as long as I can burst through the creep wave, I should be fine with with dealing with your tower push, which I ends up being not the case. I feel like are we coming to the swift resolution? Is is this the? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't even think I was in dragon form. No, you just went in. Okay, okay. I believe I bought back and ran in. That's true. Oh, that's right. That's right. Which is a little sus because I would never have bought back. <clears throat> but like, okay, so I know I know I'm gonna get roasted hard for for skipping alt at six, but like, you can see how much damage like you actually do with your Q. Like, the amount of yeah. incidental damage that I, I take nonstop is just immense. Yeah. And that's why I was I like again, and this is this is where it comes down to not being like a like a mid player, a mid specialist, and like. Actually, can you talk about that, like specifically to mid, to mid, sorry. How important is understanding the individual hero matchups? Um, yeah, that, that that has a major aspect. Like certain matchups might be really beneficial in the game, but like a lot more difficult in like further on. So the classic one I like to think about is Monkey King mid was a very, very popular thing. And Monkey King versus Ember is something that is normally very, very Monkey King favorite in the lane. Like, the only outplay that Ember can possibly have is you can slide a fist to dodge the Boundless Strike. But later in the game, Monkey King will probably never be able to sit in a tree. Because at any point, if you get slide of fisted, it it just it means you, you're, you get chained, you die. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a matchup that, like, if the Ember doesn't lose a lane hard enough, some matchups you have to realize that when you were playing the game, you're going to lose, you're going to lose your lane. And you need to understand that maybe leaving to the jungle at three minutes at five minutes is, is part of that. Like Storm Spirit, you know, people think like when they think Storm Spirit, they think of Samael. There's this one Samael game that's like etched into my brain. He went 0-5 against IG. Again, in like it, this was so long ago. This is Dota history now. In the uh, Dota Asia Championship, he went 0-5 in the lane. And people thought the game was over. And all he did was sit in the jungle for like 12, 13 minutes. He got his Orchid and he ganked all the sidelines. And he basically had more net worth than the mid shadow feed. And it's just understanding the matchups properly, you know, skilling against them is very important. Like in this case, yes, I'm doing a lot of amount, large amount of damage. But, and I don't think the problem is that you didn't, you put too many points at Dragon's Blood. I, I would say that the opposite is you put too much points at Breathe Fire. 
the most important thing in this matchup is are you able to get last hits right and what 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 is stopping you from getting last hits taking too much damage is an extra point in breathe fire going to stop me from doing more damage not really right it, it increases your damage output it doesn't really it doesn't affect the damage reduction you're still healing the same amount your auto attack your base auto attack at level nine is 115 i'm a little bit ahead of net worth even with breathe fire i'm hitting for 70. so realistically you should have a lot more denies than i would ever have because i have a limited amount of mana and i'm not going to be spending my q on securing last hits on a melee creep i have to save it for a range in order for me to be you know kind of in exp range or it to be equal in exp but you've gone a little too top heavy and because i have an early kill now i'm able to play a lot more greedy that I can I have a lot more disp disposable mana because I have arcane boots and I have a bottle and I went to jungle and now I have a trusty shovel if I could potentially get a mango or another bounty grid. There 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 are much more avenues for me to play because you kind of skilled incorrectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. It's uh in retrospect it's like it's it's almost so clear but without this conversation you you don't even make that connection. So what happens next year? That's that's what I'm curious about because the grand finale. Yeah, oh, your this, <laughs> giant triumph. This is but this this is definitely when you kill me. Now the thing is, is I've been I, I've been keeping track of your mana the whole time, right? I'm recognizing Third you can't one. alt me, but you get a burst of mana at some point. Just run at me, and I'm trying uh, to. Yes, I will. Uh, I'll fast forward to the burst of mana. Was it a regen rune? Like what happened? Uh, you <laughs> ding ding ding. <laughs> it is indeed a regen rune. I was waiting for it all lady stage. And to be honest, the mistake I was making is not oh shipping gosh, out enough there region. Is. There it it's is. It's bottom. Right here, I was like, all right, it's, it's over. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I have I have everything. I even I went to go do. check. I was like, oh, God. I got scared for a second. Then all of a sudden. Oh, outraged the I tried. Fire. I tried to break it. And here, I, I think I was trying to click your thing. And when you when you popped the alt, I was like, that's so sad. Is this the buyback? It's, it's gonna happen here. It scares this me. Is, this I'm is just, the moment. I was just like, oh god. You've got almost 2k on me. I do. Uh, it is due to the kills more than CS. If it was just on CS, I'd probably be like only 400, 500. So you're 80. I did not oh, expect yeah. you. I, I did not expect you just to run at my tier one. <laughs> I'll be realistic. Usually, what we want to end at two kills or 10 minutes, but it's 12 minutes 50 and you just. <laughs> You beeline the tier one, which was very powerful, you know. So in theory, who won? Well, I'll, I'll let uh, the comment section yeah. determine that. But I think yeah. that your two K net worth, your three kills, might outweigh my tower kill. But I mean, uh, psychologically, I, I'm shattered. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> the, the enemy DK just bought back and broke my tower without even using his ult. <laughs> yeah. Right I, mean, I wasn't even it. thinking about that. I was just like, whoa, he's just melee hitting my tier one. <laughs> Oh jeez, but you know what? That's that's what's amazing about Dota. Sometimes it's just it's just a damn fun game to play. And I gotta say, I'm really grateful for you taking the time to go through this with me. And uh, I'm gonna have nightmares with this lane, but like it's crazy. Just the small things that you had done to really press your advantage. And as an as an Archon player, like I I did not cope with the pressure you put on me. Like the CS was missed. Um, you know the I got fancy with the skill stuff. Like the whole thing. And it's. It really goes to show you that when you get to 7K, you're there for a reason. And, uh, you know, I can't thank you enough for sharing your knowledge with us today. And, guys, once again, as we end here, as the Ancient explodes, all of uh, AA Social is going to be linked down below. You're going to see his Twitch, his YouTube, and you guys got to check it out. He's extremely knowledgeable. And he's a fantastic player. And you're going to see him again on the channel as we continue to do some educational content. So, guys, be sure to check him out. We'll see you in the next Dota 2 video.